It's starting to be the end of the year and around this time, a little bit into December, going into the new year, there's this weird trend of a bunch of people where they say, can we leave this specific thing in this year and don't carry it into the next year? Where I'm jumping the gun a little bit early. Can we leave the random think piece hot takes about situations that need more information in this year so that we don't bring it into next year? Because I'm tired of a bunch of people speaking their minds on situations where you would want more information instead of running the TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and giving the most generic hot take and making everybody feel bad when a situation is not really warranted in feeling bad. We have done this over and over and over again where people speak their minds and they're well within their right to do so, but they end up being wrong and when they're wrong, they either don't acknowledge that they were wrong, apologize for the fact that they were wrong, or give a generic statement to try to make it seem like they were subtly in the right and we should pay attention to another aspect instead of the thing that you wanted everybody to pay attention to. In walks Leonard Cure, and I'm gonna show you a couple tweets and a couple videos from people that are going to overly explain to you that this man was wrongfully put in jail for 16 years and as of 2020 was let out. Put a pin in that because you're going to have to have it beat over your head within the next couple of minutes. He is now dead. Why? Because of a traffic stop with a white officer, because of course that's gonna be the spin. He's also a person of color. He's dead because of traffic stop. 53-year-old Leonard Cure bought his first home in Georgia last week using settlement money from a wrongful conviction case against the state of Florida. It was there in Broward County that Cure spent more than 16 years behind bars for an armed robbery he didn't commit. With help from Florida's Innocence Project, Cure was exonerated and released in 2020. He is someone that was failed by the system once, and he has again been failed by the system. He's been twice taken away. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says Cure was stopped in Camden County, Georgia by a sheriff's deputy Monday morning. The GBI reports Cure initially complied with the deputy's commands, but stopped when he learned he was under arrest. It said the deputy used a taser and a baton on Cure, and after Cure allegedly assaulted him, the deputy fatally shot him. The Camden County Sheriff's Office says it does plan to release the deputy's body camera footage soon. She is demanding justice for her son, Leonard Kerr. Attorney Ben Crump represents Cure's family and pointed out Wednesday the future Cure had planned for himself after exoneration. He was looking forward to going to college, getting a degree. I, I, I tell you, people are so devastated that this happened to Leonard. The deputy involved in the shooting has been placed on administrative leave while the investigation continues, according to the Camden County Sheriff's Office. And if it stopped there, you would have more and more people trying to say the justice system doesn't care about black people, the justice system doesn't care about persons of color, white militant cops hunting down black people, all these generic talking points that you want to fit the bill to every single cop in the world, but it don't stick, especially when you promote and make something popular that doesn't doesn't fit your narrative and all you had to do was wait maybe a few hours if not a few days and you would have realized what you were trying to promote was not something you should have been doing but we're gonna have fun with these tweets anyway Leonard Cure was incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit for 16 years before getting his life snatched from him by a cop modern policing is rooted in slavery and rotten to the core this is the America Republicans do not want to reckon with we need to get back to work in the US House of Representatives and pass the hashtag George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. SPLC is deeply saddened by the tragic loss of Leonard Cure in Cabin County, Georgia. We are urgently calling for a transformation in policing that honors every individual's rights. The ongoing anti-blackness in policing must end. Every leader must act for justice and accountability. Body cam footage captures Cabin County Sheriff Deputy Buck Aldridge, who recently fatally shot exonerated black man Leonard Cure, brutally beating and tasing another unarmed black man. Oh, just so you know, there's gonna be a few people, now that all the information regarding how this all transpired came out, there's gonna be a few people like this, trying to say, look, this guy also did this to another black man, so therefore, this situation is also warranted of him being put in jail, losing his badge, and being someone who never serves the community, because how dare he do this to black people? Meanwhile, don't even have full context to whatever this body 
body cam footage is. Maybe he's in the right. Maybe he's in the wrong. I don't know. All you're giving me is body cam footage with no additional information. And how dare you think that my mind is that slow? But let's keep reading. This was indeed the best one out of the bunch that I could find via Twitter. So let me get this right. Leonard Allen Cure was firstly wrong, convicted of a crime, spent 16 fucking years screaming his innocence until the Innocence Project helped free him. Then four years later, he shot during a traffic stop by pigs who conveniently won't say why they stopped him in the first place. It was a traffic stop. Imagine the trauma of a black man being pulled over knowing the rate of survival of black men going through a traffic stop and who wrongfully spent 16 years in prison. The pig said he didn't comply, so they used a stun gun and a baton, and then they shot him. We all know they lived to kill and lie. Another innocent man's life completely destroyed by the justice system. He got out full of hope, happy to get his freedom back, only to end up murdered by pigs. You can't fucking reform this and I want to stop right there before I read the next few tweets because I feel it important now right here as we're getting this generic statement to show you something that negates all the talking points. We have some breaking news just into the newsroom. The Camden Sheriff's Office just released dash cam video of a deputy shooting and killing a man after pulling him over for speeding. It happened Monday morning on Interstate 95. 11 Live's Ron Jones is joining us now to break down the video and what led up to the shooting, Ron? You know, there's a lot of growing concerns about this video. It just was released and several minutes long here, folks, but but we're going to show you the full encounter between the deputy and the suspect, Leonard Cure, before the deputy opens fire. And we're going to start with the video when the audio is turned on, when the video starts here, which is right after the vehicle is pulled over on the side of the road. And we want to warn you, this is pretty hard to watch. Get out! Get out! Put your hands back here. I ain't do f Put your damn hands back here. Dude. Who are you? Staff Sergeant Officer Sheriff's Office. My name is John Wayne. I don't care. Step to the rear of this vehicle. In the name of who? In the name of the yes. law of the state of Georgia. Step back here. Now you're getting tased. <laughs> I'm going. Watch me now. Put your hands on the back of that truck. Do you see that? Put your hands on the back of that truck. The back of the truck. Both hands. Turn around. 34, can you send me another unit? One non-compliant. Your name is Officer who? Staff Sergeant Aldridge with the Camden County Sheriff's Office. Who County? Camden County. Put your hand behind your back. Do I have a Do I have a warrant? Wait, wait. No, 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 no. no. Excuse me. Excuse me. Either put your hands behind your back, or you're getting tased. I'm telling you that right Why? now. Why am I getting tased? Because you are under arrest for speeding and reckless driving. I'm not driving. Nobody was hurt. How was I speeding? You passed me doing 100 miles an hour. Okay, so that's a speeding ticket, right? Sir, tickets in the state of Georgia are criminal offenses. I don't have a ticket in Georgia. You do now? Why? You passed me doing okay, 100 miles an hour. And what? Am I going to Hands jail? behind your back. Yes, you are going no. to jail. Hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. that we don't want to show everything because moments later, the deputy actually shoots Cure. He falls to the ground. You can see Cure moving around for about a minute after the shooting. Then more first responders, they show up on the scene and about four minutes later after the shooting, officials begin to perform CPR. Now the sheriff's office says that they wanted to make that video available to the public to show how the incident escalated to the point of extreme use of force guys. Yeah, Ron, a lot of folks have been talking about this, wanting more information yeah. about what's going on. We do know that you are a former police sergeant. You have a lot of history also as a training officer. So what did you make of what you were able to see? Well, well first of all, I don't want to be a Monday morning quarterback, but I do have a few questions here, such as, why did the officer demand, as soon as he got there to the scene, that Mr. Cure get out of the truck? Why didn't he walk to the passenger side? These are questions that I would be asking, especially with so much traffic there. Could he have used a better de-escalation approach as he was walking to the vehicle? 
Did he call for backup before he got out of the vehicle? We heard him call for backup, but is there a different way he could have de-escalated the entire situation before it turned into gunfire? You see how we go from, it is unarmed black man getting hunted down by cop to, well, damn, this cop tried every means before the gun to de-escalate and put this man in handcuffs because he's in the wrong. Why? Because he's going over the speed limit, which will warrant the cops coming to you and be like, why are you driving so damn fast? Story time with Rue and Leon. I went on a road trip and in that road trip, it was about one o'clock in the morning. It's pitch black outside. I got my headlights on and guess what Leon's doing? He's speeding his ever loving ass off. And I stupidly thought it was one of those lanes where you could go about 60 and 70. Got pulled over by a cop. I was doing 120 in a 45 miles per hour road. Spoiler alert, I was getting pulled over if I got caught. And I got caught. I gave my ID. I wasn't fearful that I was going to die. I was a little bit fearful that I was going to get more than just a ticket because, you know, the circumstances of my car at the time made it seem like it was a little bit of a hazard. But I got a speeding ticket. I went on my merry way, had a nice little road trip, and paid the $300 that was that speeding ticket. Yes, I know, egregious, but I paid it anyway. I didn't die. I wasn't in fear of dying. I was just in the irrational fear that maybe I was going to go to jail and get my anus tickled because that's not the fun experience anybody wants to have in their life. But you can't sit here and paint this out without the details necessary. And I showed you that body cam footage and all that for a reason, because this guy, after being told that this was out there public for him to see, went along to say, so I just saw all the quotes and comments only now because yes, I do have a life. I've seen the video and it confirms exactly what I've said. If y'all don't see it, I'm tired and it's not my responsibility to explain it to y'all. And last but not least, you'll note that Cabman County Sheriff's conveniently did not release the body cam footage of the actual shooter. Why? Was he still on the floor when he shot him? But hey, he resisted. Well, what I saw is a man being pulled over and instead of getting a ticket like a white person would in the same situation, then complied. But upon learning that he would go back to jail over some petty shit like this, when a white person would never ever see the inside of one he had a visceral reaction to that so crazy how wrongful spending 16 fucking years in jail can do that to you i don't even know why i bother because whatever i say or whatever proof i can get you'll just never see black people's humanity like the absolute fucking disgusting nasty ass racist garbage that y'all are in collusion with so let me just be the guy to alert this person of color because he doesn't look black enough to hang out at the barbecue with me Guess what? Every single black person and white person don't have the same experience. Every black person and white person does not respond the same when dealing with police. Some people respond respectfully. Some people respond belligerently. But you cannot sit there and say you have the evidence and you're broadcasting it and you're mad that a bunch of people are criticizing you because your think pieces do not line up with the actual fucking evidence of the body cam footage being in front of your face showing that this man was attacking the cop after going through various processes that didn't involve a damn gun. And if he just put his hands on the back of the truck and then put his hands behind his back, instead of throwing a bitch fit, he wouldn't be in the situation that he is in, which is dead. Then these TikTokers, the beacons of what it means to be credible journalists, they want you to beat it over your head that this guy was put in jail for 16 years for something he didn't do, which is true. And yes, the Innocence Project helped him. And it's a great thing. Nobody with a brain is going to refute that. If you are wrongly put in jail for years for crimes you didn't commit, yes, people should be working to help you. And I'm glad that they did. That does not negate any future activity that would put this man in the wrong and it's weird how these tiktokers want to paint it like that everybody meet leonard cure now out of all the stories i cover this man's story is pretty fucking devastating because only three years ago this man was completely exonerated from a crime he didn't even commit and this is him celebrating in fact he was the first person exonerated by our conviction review unit by the broward state attorney's office and now he was killed by a deputy for a basic traffic stop but first, let me tell you about the wrongful conviction of this man. The Innocent Project of Florida, Lennon Cure. The charge, armed robbery with a firearm, aggravated assault with a firearm. Conviction, armed robbery with a firearm, aggravated assault with a firearm. Sentenced, life in prison. Yet this school shooter got 
20 years and only served 17. So what happened with the case? On November 10th, 2003, a man with a revolver forced his way into a Walgreens store in the early morning hours. After threatening one employee with the revolver, the suspect left the store with $1,700 in cash. This all happened at 7.15 in the morning. Two days after the incident, both victims, who were also the only witnesses, met with the detectives to complete a composite sketch based on their recollection of the person. Unfortunately, the observation of the two witnesses did not match. A week later, detectives had constructed a lineup and asked both individuals to identify the subjects independently. Out of the six men presented to her in a lineup, the first witness chose number three, Leonard Cure. The second witness, on the other hand, was between Cure and another suspect, but concluded that number three, Cure, was the same complexion. It turns out Cure wasn't even there. You know what he was doing the whole time? He was helping his girlfriend take their three kids to school, and then he went to the ATM at 6.52 in the morning, and he took out $20 that was three miles away south of said Walgreens. His boss showed up at 8 a.m. in the morning and his co-workers said that he shows up at 7 a.m. each day. And now after this man celebrated because he was finally exonerated, the deputy decided to pull him over because he was going 90 and 70 miles an hour when she should have just gave him a speeding ticket and walked away. But no, the deputy had him get out of his vehicle and then killed the man. And just back in August, he was rewarded over $800,000 and just bought his home a week ago. Now, the NAACP is demanding the release of the body cam footage, which they are not releasing. And this is why the police are so fucking dangerous, because they terrorized this man his entire fucking life and wrongly convicted him based on the complexion of his damn skin, not on what he fucking looks like or evidence to back it up, even though he had proof to prove that he wasn't even in the area when the crime was committed. And then they killed the man for just speed. Yet police only solved 2% of major crimes. We do not need you because creators like myself and many others make content like this, do real investigations, make this shit go viral because people actually give a fuck about these things, which you guys lack. And we don't just base it off of the complexion of their damn skin. Well, everybody, let's fight for justice for this man because we know cops lie about this shit all the damn time and cover their asses. So let's get this man justice. My name's Eric Stone. Doses. I'd like you all to meet Leonard Allen Cure, 53 years old. Back in 2003, he was arrested for and then charged and convicted of committing armed robbery. Through that entire process, he maintained his innocence, but he was convicted nonetheless and sentenced to prison. After 16 years in prison, an organization called the Innocence Project uh, took on his case, and then they teamed up with the state attorney in Broward County who had formed something called the Conviction Review Unit. And the very first case they looked at was Leonard's. They ended up finding receipts that proved that Leonard could not have been in the place where the armed robbery took place when it took place. He was not the person who had committed that crime. He was exonerated. He was released from prison. I believe the state of Florida paid him around $180,000 for his time. And he was, at least finally in 2020, a free man once again. And this past Monday, a sheriff's deputy in Georgia shot and killed Leonard during a traffic stop. He pulled over Leonard for speeding, said that he got out of his car when requested, complied with the officer. And it was only when the officer told him that he was under arrest that he gave any kind of resistance. Do you think maybe a man who was falsely accused of a crime, sentenced for it, spent 16 years in prison, might have a trauma response to being told you're under arrest? Think that's possible at all? He went to leave and the officer's like, you're not gonna leave. And he said he pulled out his stun gun, used it on Leonard, and then claims that Leonard assaulted him in response. He used the stun gun again, he used a baton, and then he pulled his service weapon and he shot and killed Leonard on the side of a Georgia road. I find it interesting that in the aftermath of this, one of the people who has the most complimentary things to say about Leonard is the state attorney in Broward County. The Leonard we knew was smart, funny, and a kind person. After he was freed and exonerated by our office, he visited prosecutors at our office and participated in training to help our staff 
do their job in the fairest and most thorough way possible. He would frequently call to check in on Assistant State Attorney Ariel Demby Berger, the head of the Conviction Review Unit, and offer our team encouragement to continue to do the important work for justice. Wrongfully convicted and 16 years of his life taken from him by a system that failed him, only to be released and then have his actual life taken from him by a system that failed him. It feels pretty clear it's the system that's broken. So on Monday, 53-year-old black man named Leonard Cure was traveling through South Georgia about seven in the morning and he was pulled over for speeding. He, according to the police, um, was uh, resisting arrest after the police officer told him that he was going to arrest Mr. Cure. The arrest again, as far as we know, was for speeding, which really leads me to question how many people get arrested for speeding. Anyway, officer claims that Leonard Cure struggled or resisted and the cop ended up shooting him dead. The irony here is that Leonard Cure was imprisoned for 16 years in Florida for a crime he didn't do. He was only released in 2010, I'm sorry, 2020. So only had three years of freedom. Um, before he was shot dead by a police officer in Georgia, South Georgia. I say ironic because what if the arrest of Mr. Cure that led to his death here in Georgia was also illegal, was also wrongful, um, was also fabricated? I hope that an actual real investigation is done and my heart goes out to Mr. Cure's family. You don't have to try this hard to try to make everything sound black and white. You don't have to try this hard to make everybody look dumb for basic information that you had to wait for. They put the body cam footage out basically saying, hey, what y'all are saying about this isn't what went on and we're going to show you steadfast. You are delusional thinking that your random pity journalism is going to be effective in the real world. And I wish people would stop this and stop playing with people's emotions and minds thinking, oh my God, this is a shame how this justice system treats individuals like this and how dare they do this. They don't even have a reason to do this. How could they possibly do it? Yes, they do. Because your TikTok where you're explaining what you think goes on while you're smoking weed is not the law. You follow the law, you won't have a majority of these problems. Are there crooked cops? Yes. Are there corrupt justice systems? Yes. Should those be abolished and restructured so that we have a fair justice system for the whites, the blacks, the Mexicans and the Hispanics and the Chinese and the Taiwanese because it's seemingly forgotten that other ethnicities exist on this planet. Yes, they should. Nobody with a brain's going to negate that. And we have numerous examples to prove whether it's a black man, a black woman, a white man or a white woman that the system's corrupt and it needs to be fixed. But, however, and I need you to listen closely for the random paragraph people that are going to say, well, if you look at the situation in the eyes of the person of color, shut up. I'm telling you to listen to the person of color. You cannot think peace your way around the law. He was attacking an officer who was trying to get to the bottom of him driving 100 miles per hour where he shouldn't be doing so. End of story. He escalated this past the point and the officer responded in necessity. If you're mad about that, guess what? Your random talk about 16 years in jail is not going to do anything about it. And to end this video, I'll do it the same fucking way I've done it in the past with all you people that want to be first instead of being correct and right. Check your morals at the door. Stop trying to get likes on social media. Stop trying to be the pretend hero that you're never going to be and actually be credible. Therefore, nobody has to come to you and say, hey, dumbass, you didn't look at more information. Hey, dumbass, you didn't watch this video. Hey, dumbass, show people the video because it's more important and should be more substantial to be credible than it is to be fucking first. Subscribe to the channel. Get the fuck out of here.